What happens to your recycling in your composting and press kit? A couple of years ago, one of the things I noticed when I was in the village is just, I just look at the dumpster and it was overflowing all, all the time. So I wonder how I could help the Prescott College community to reduce its waste. And the way I did it is I provided environmental education. And I, and I did this as my senior project for my undergrad. And for my master capstone, what I'm doing right now is I research deep into what is the circular economy and as well, I really wonder and track where our trash from the city of Prescott ends up. I would like to acknowledge that the city of Prescott is located in the ancestral territory of the Yavapai Apache people. This video first is gonna explore what happens to our compost in Prescott, what happens to the recycling, and as well, what can we do to have a more circular system? Do you know that the US is one of the most wasteful countries in the world? And we waste about 40% of our food production, which equals to throw like a thousand apples per person per year. Which, you know, instead of us, we're gonna explore instead of us like throwing this apple into the landfill, we're gonna talk about composting. My name is Annie Baker and I studied environmental studies at Prescott College. So I started volunteering with the Prescott Community Compost Project and then I was hired on as a staff member. This project was funded through a grant through the USDA. So all of those food scraps that this program uses, they come from the Prescott Farmers Market and the way it goes is like every Saturday people go to the market with their food scraps in a bucket and in, they get a clean bucket in return. Through our participation with the market and other community members, we were able to tap in to find amazing volunteers who were interested in coming every Sunday and processing raw food scraps and doing the bulk of the labor um, that it takes to make this program run. So we're totally volunteer powered. Um. I served volunteering since 2021. I really love going. I go every Sunday and I am able to like hang out with people from the community. Um, in my house as well, we all bring our foot scraps over there every Sunday. What's cool about this community compost site is like we have folks from all different backgrounds, all different, you know, political backgrounds, social backgrounds, uh, different places from all over the world and the country. And everyone kind of like finds themselves here and it's this like eclectic group of people every week that wouldn't maybe cross paths otherwise. And here they are mixing compost batches together and shoveling compost and inevitably connecting. And then hopefully bringing those connections off the site as well, which I've gotten to witness as well, which is cool. Yeah, composting is essentially breaking down organic matter into something that we can use to amend our soils. So we on the compost site gather a bunch of food scraps and a bunch of carbon rich material um, such as leaves and we pile them out here, mix them around, um, spray them with water, which is a really important part of the process. Um, and then eventually they go into these bins, which pump air through them for about two months because oxygen is also a really important part of the process that we use, which is a hot composting method. So we have hot bacteria that are cooking all the food scraps and um, we just move it down along the pad, mixing in oxygen and water as we manipulate and move the piles. You know, for me, compost is just like connecting with the earth. So it's for me, it's giving back to her, right? will sift out the large material such as wood chips and into something that's fine and really nice to plant with your garden beds or maybe in a pot. So something super cool is that you can go and buy the compost at the Prescott Farmers Market booth and something amazing is that like you know people who buy the product like you're basically like using your own food scraps for your gardens which is amazing. Environmentally, we are sequestering carbon when we compost. 
we are recycling nutrients, we are keeping the water from getting contaminated, we're retaining water in the soils when we add compost so that plants have more access and then it doesn't just drain away immediately. It can be really, really tangible for anybody. Um, it doesn't have to be a complicated, scary thing. Not everybody has to manage their own pile. Normally every city has their own compost facility, and in this case, the city of Prescott, we don't have one. But we have this amazing project with the compost, right? So, you know, if you want to start by doing something, bring your food scraps every Saturday to the market. And then as well, you can join sessions Fridays and Sundays, and where you're going to be able to learn about what is compost and the process of it, and as well, get free food. So most of our economy is still linear. So what we do is we extract resources from the earth and then we make the product and then it ends up being waste. And a cool reference fact is that normally like every single American, we create about 2,000 pounds of trash every year. So the sugar economy is a system in where we want to help the products expand their life cycle, right? So we want to have a, circ a circular model in where we reuse refurbish and recycle and we also share right so this is going to help us eliminate waste and as well it's going to support us to achieve deeper sustainability. Composting is a principle of circular economy because we are not allowing anything to go to waste we're reusing it we're recycling it. it's being repurposed. Recycling is the best example of the circular economy so we wanted to understand where our recycling goes from Prescott, so we went down to Phoenix to the transfer station and where the station, what they do is they sort out the trash and then they sell the end product. So we took a tour with the legendary Jeff Whitlock and he explained us how the recycling station worked. So on the tipping floor, the trucks will come here from whichever city is dumping. They'll dump here on the tipping floor this loader grabs the material from the tipping floor, takes it over to the drum feeder. The drum feeder then makes it into a nice, even uh, flat surface onto the conveyor belt so it can go into the MRF. It's a material recovery facility. We call it a MRF for short. So what happens is that as these film plastics get in here, it works the same way. It's got these big wheels that turn like this and all the 2D material paper floats to the top. 3D material falls down to the bottom or through the cracks. The plastic gets caught up, it plugs those holes. So now the material can't get down through those holes anymore. So about two times a day they'll get in there and they'll have to cut all those plastic bags out of that machine to get it unlodged so it works properly for, for the sorting paper. Basically a baler is just a big chimney. Everything drops down in it, then it compresses it into a cube and then it wraps it with wire and then pushes it out. Those cubes or bales are what then is sold for a profit. So uh, the cleaner and nicer your bale, the more money you make. So then the bales are stored here until they find a buyer for them. And then they load the semi-truck and the material goes off. Jeff also told us how other machines sort out the glass, aluminum, and other metals. We're going to talk about the recycling system. I found plastic one and two. Just make sure before you guys dump it into the recycling that it's actually rinsed. I found styrofoam and it's actually number six. So the city of Prescott, they don't recycle number three to seven. So make sure that this goes into the non-recyclable. I found a seltzer can and a garbanzo bean can. So this also has to be rinsed, y'all. I found paper and cardboard. This is flat, so this is perfect. I found this cardboard box, but it has to be flat. I found the plastic bag and bubble wrap. This can't be recycled, so make sure that it goes to the non-recyclable. I found this coffee cup, and this can't be recycled, or it's also not compostable, so make sure if you guys go to a coffee shop, just bring your own mug, because then you prevent this cup going to a landfill. One thing that you guys should do is, in the States, every city and town, they have a different recycling policy. So make sure to read and inform yourself of the recycling policy that you have where you're living at. So the transfer station that we went to also sorts out everything that, is, that goes to landfill. So Jeff is gonna explain us how that works. 
Between the two transfer stations that the city of Phoenix has, yeah. we haul 150 trucks a day on average to the landfill. So that's about 9 million pounds of trash a day being wow. landfilled. One of the main things is that 22% nationwide, it's actually what we find in landfills is food scraps. And the thing with food scraps is that if you leave it on an open area like a landfill, what's gonna happen is it's gonna release more methane than CO2. So the problem with this is that methane has 28 times more warming effect than CO2. Therefore, that's why it's important that we do composting. So this trash right here you're looking at was buried underground for 46 years. So, and you can see that stuff's not breaking down. We're packing these landfills so tight that there's no oxygen. So everything's just getting mummified. So it's one more reason to make sure you recycle or reuse materials because otherwise you're just taking up space for hundred years. This is a diagram of our landfill, um, the way it works. So you dig a big hole, it's called a cell. Okay. Then that cell is lined with these different layers. They have a geo clay layer then they have a real thick plastic, like a 60 mil plastic. Uh, this layer keeps any kind of fluids or anything from passing through into the groundwater. Um, then they'll put a waffle cone layer, which is so like the garbage juice or leachate can flow through. And then they do like a real thick fabric, like a felt. And then they'll put about a foot of dirt on that and then they'll start piling trash. So the transfer station also composts organic matter from landscaping companies. We compost right around 55,000 tons a year and that material it's it's a really state-of-the-art facility that has um, aeration systems so they can heat the piles up or cool them down on demand and then within 65 days they will turn that compost into good sellable product and it's usually sold out like two months in advance so when i asked jeff he said that 75 percent of recycling actually gets recycled but overall of all the amount of waste the percentage is going to be lower. If we have a thing too online. You can go look at the, it's called the city manager's dashboard. And it's, it's open to the public, so it's phoenix.gov. And you can look it up and they have actual data of how much recycling and it's reported daily. So it's constantly adjusting and flexing. And so we're always like 36, 32, 38. So it's like right in there, like how much we're diverting uh, throughout the whole city. So for my undergrad senior project, what I did, I was teaching people how to uh, do waste audits, do recycling workshops and, compo and composting workshops. So one of the main things that we did was two waste audits. And basically a waste audit is when you take all the trash out of dumpsters and then you sort it out per category. And the first waste audit that we did, we had 98% of cross contamination in the recycling bin. And after a month and a half that we did the second audit, we only had 2% of cross contamination. So this really means that for me, the environmental education that I provided was actually working. Like it was one of the main key points in my project. So right now our plastic bags is our biggest problem. Yeah. So everywhere we go, we're like, no plastic bags, no plastic bags. And then uh, once you start getting that out to the public, you can start to see a little bit of a turn but you have to educate them all the time. Okay. So. so there's two main key points of sustainability that I did with my project. And the first one was trying to like bring everyone to the stimulant mindset of like, how can they utilize the seminars of sustainability in their daily life? And then there's also the technical aspect in where I teach everyone how to sort out the recycling system according to the city of Prescott. Yeah, so we do outreach. We go into any schools, HOAs, um, any community uh, group that wants uh, education on recycling we'll go out there we'll custom make like a PowerPoint or something for them to go out and teach them recycling we do it in the libraries and then we also have schools come here and they can tour this facility for free if you go to phoenix.gov uh, slash recycle all you gotta do is request a tour we'll do up to a hundred students and then they can come up here um, we teach them about recycling we show them what happens to their trash we show them the recycling how their recycle gets processed through the material and the new materials that it makes. So it's, it's really good to reach out to the community. Um, we have a lot of homeschool-based curriculums. And then if you go online to our website, we actually have grade-specific uh, activities that teach recycling to kids. So it's a little curriculum for people who wanted to learn about recycling or teach recycling. The, all the, it's online for them to go, and then they could come here in person to see it. So one of the things that I did, I decided to like continue my senior project after I was done. And in spring of 2023, I did a zero waste fellowship with the Post Landfill Action Network in where I certified Prescott College as a zero waste institution. So I did a zero waste assessment overall of like all the school. 
and Prescott College was actually certified with uh, as a zero waste institution in scope two, which is basically with composting and recycling. And then one thing we try to tell people too is like, if you want to support the recycle industry, buy recycled materials, because then you're completing that circle, creating that circular economy, and when you create demand, then they make the products, so. I think we have been learning about pretty cool stuff. And one of the things is we have learned about how the composting works in Prescott because a lot of people, what they do is they go to the farmer's market, they bring their foot scraps, and then, you know, Annie Baker is the one who's running the program. She's collecting all the foot scraps. And then every Sunday, everyone from the community goes and does composting, right? So I think that's something super amazing. And as well, one of the cool things that we have done is we went to the transfer station down in Phoenix and what we learned from Jeff Whitlock is that he explained us how the recycling station works, how they sort out the product and how itself as well they have a landfill and a composting station. And I think one of the amazing things is the environmental curriculum that they're actually providing for different schools and colleges down in Phoenix. So we have learned about the circular economy and we have seen examples, for example, composting and recycling. So one of the key points for my project was the environmental education that I provided. And I made everyone aware of how to sort out the trash and how to recycle. And before I provided the workshops, I noticed that we had 98% of cross-contamination in the recycling. And you know, like after doing the second waste audit, I just see 2% of cross-contamination. So I can say that educating everyone was essential for this. And one of the things that we can see from the recycling station is that they're doing the same. They're going to schools and colleges down in Phoenix to help people learn how to sort out the trash and how to be environmentally aware. So we have provided you guys with different sustainability strategies and where we have taught you guys how to compost and recycle here in Prescott. So I wonder what are you guys gonna do to make your community more sustainable? I love rainbows. See, that's how much of a gift this program is. It takes a lot of hard work and love, and then we get rainbows over the site. Double. I mean, triple wear. The little one. Yeah. Well, I love my job. <laughs> yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Right, Frank? Yeah, he wasn't listening. <laughs>